Hi there, my name is Mr. Code, and in this video we're going to talk about a greedy algorithm for interval scheduling. And before we're going to uh, go into the details, um, let me give you an overview. So first of all, I'm going to describe the problem itself, of course. Uh, then I'm going to come up with a solution. Then we're uh, going to give a pseudo code for uh, our solution, and then we're going to prove our solution to the problem. So let's start with describing the problem. So imagine this. You have 10 activities you can do today and you can only do one activity at the same time. You want to do as many activities as possible today. So this is of course the key. Um, therefore you want a schedule that maximizes the amount of activities. So imagine you have this schedule. Um, what you want to do is select the activities um, that are of course compatible with each other and it should be the maximum amount of them so you want to do as many activities as possible um, yeah so imagine that you want from uh, 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock you want to have a date with this really pretty girl um, from 7 to 9 you can study, from 6 to 7 you can have dinner, um, from 5 to 7 you can have, you can go play soccer, things like that. So you have a lot of activities and you want to do as many activities as possible today. Um, let's come up with some notation for this problem. So in a formal way, every activity J starts at a time SJ and it finishes at fj and two activities n and m are compatible if they don't overlap so that means that the starting time of a of an activity shouldn't be uh, smaller than the finishing time of the previous activity of course then they overlap if that's the case um so yeah that and the key to uh, the solution is to sort all activities ascending on their finishing time. So what you're going to do with in this algorithm is um, we're going through all the activities and we're going to first sort them on their finishing time and they should of course be compatible. So this is what we're going to do. Um, the first finishing time is that of activity 2 so we're going to select that activity then uh, 3 has the shortest finishing time so we're going to select 3 um, then 1 of course but it's not compatible with 2 or 3 um, then we have activity 4 which is not compatible with 3 5 uh, neither 6 is compatible with 3 because finishing time is um, smaller than the starting time of 6. Um, 7 is not compatible, 8 is compatible. And then we have 9 which is of course also compatible. And 10 is not compatible because the starting time is smaller than the finishing time of 9. So we have a set of the activities 2 three, six, eight, and nine. These are five activities. So in this case, this is the maximum amount of activities that we can do today. So too bad for that pretty girl. We're not going to date her today. Yeah. Um, now let's go, uh, let's talk about the pseudo code of our solution. So our, we already said that we are going to sort our activities by their finishing time uh, so that um, the first activity is the activity with, this, with the smallest finishing time. And we're going to use this order for the following. We're going to initialize a set called A. This is an empty set and we're going to add the uh, compatible activities to this acti uh, activity set. In order to do this we're going to loop over all activities uh, from J's 1 to N and we only add J to A if activity J is compatible with A. 
So this is a simple check. You check uh, from the last element of A the finishing time. Uh, no, yeah, the finishing time. And then for the activity J, you check whether the starting time is compatible with the finishing time of the previous activity. So you're going to do that for every activity and in the end you have your uh, set so you, you just simply return it and that's it. It's quite simple, right? Um, but a quite important question is then cool, but what is the running time of the algorithm? This is of course important because you can you want an optimal you want an algorithm that returns an optimal solution, but of course the time is important as well. So let's talk about that. Basically, we have two important uh, parts within this pseudo code that uh, decide the that could excite decides the upper bound. The first one is the, the sorting of the activities. Uh, in the best case, this can be done n log n time. So, for example, with a mer merge short algorithm. Then we have uh, this is a, a constant operation return as well, and the for loop itself is in the worst case uh, as an upper bound of O n. So, if you sum that all up, the worst the the tightest upper bound is O n log n because, well, it's higher than O n, so th that's the, the worst case upper bound. So it's actually quite good for an algorithm, O n log n. Let's now prove our solution to the problem. So what has to be proved is that all activities in A are compatible. And in order to do this, because you can have infinitely activities, infinitely many activities, you have to use induction. Well, you could use it. Um, and this is useful because you can show that in the base case that it holds that it's compatible. And in an induction step, uh, you have this induction hypothesis, uh, hypothesis uh, that says that if something holds for this amount, then you're going to show that it still holds for if you add a random element to the set and show that it's still compatible. So in the base case, we're just going to assume an empty set of activities. So A is empty, thus um, all activities are compatible. Well, that's quite trivial, of course, but well, it's the base case. Then our induction hypothesis is that um, all activities up to J in A are compatible. So J is not yet included um, to the empty set. We haven't decided whether it should be added or not. And this is just a random activity. Now in the induction step, we're going to prove that all activities, uh, all activities including J in A are compatible. And for this, we're going to create a distinction in two cases. So if J isn't an element of A and if J is. In the first case, if you don't add, if J hasn't been added to, to A, then that means that all activities uh, including J are compatible because you haven't added J to A, so A sh should still be compatible based on your uh, hypothesis. And if J is added, so the second case, then J was added to A because the condition holds that activity J is compatible with A. So if that holds, then it should it should have been added. So it is added, so the condition must hold. And because in these two cases, A is still compatible, um, all activities including J in A are still compatible. So the induction step holds, and the base 
casehold. So based on the adduction axiom, we can conclude that all activities in A are compatible. And that's what we want to prove. So QED. Um, before I'm going to end this video, um, when talking about the implementation of this, it's actually quite simple. It's just sorting it. It's creating a for loop and an if statement. It's basically that. So it's not that hard if you want to implement it. And well, yeah, I guess that's it. Um, if you th thought this, this video was uh, useful, please make sure to hit the thumbs up to give the like. If you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the comment section. And if you want to support this channel, please make sure to subscribe. So. Bye.